And today on the podcast, we've got Michael from Celebrity Cruises. So welcome to the podcast, Michael. Hey, thanks for having me. You're very, very welcome. You've got a, such a wide range of activities for them to do. I don't think the kids are actually going to get bored. I think maybe the problem is actually meeting up with the kids because they might just want to wander off and go and do their own thing. So can you tell us a little bit more about all the different kids clubs that you have? Yeah, so people think with Celebrity Cruises that we don't cater for children. Obviously, we've got a sister brand, Royal Caribbean, that has ships, slides, rock climbing walls and lots of fun stuff. And with us, our kids' facilities are fantastic. Like My son's now 10 and has been cruising with Celebrity since he was five. And we have, it's called Camp at Sea. So everything that is in our kids' facilities is on the STEM program. So science, technology, engineering and math. So it's not if your kids come to our children's clubs, it won't be like just face painting and playstations and go bear hunt. They're actually, the education is being built into the daily activities and every single cruise, kids' itinerary is different depending on the age of the children that are on the ship, the sailing to the destinations that you're going. So the, the, the youth workers tailor every single sailing to the demographic and the age of the children. So I'll give you an example. I my, Two years ago, we did the 10-night canary sailing at Kids Half Term in October. And I went to pick up my son from kids from the kids' club, and they actually had buckets of water. They'd made ships, and they were actually... Oh, not a good thing to say it, but they were actually sinking the ships by using weights. So I thought, you're on a ship, and you're sinking ships. But it was teaching that it was part of maths and science of, of the weights to keep the boats, like float so actually they were having a great time thinking them in the kids club but actually it's educational as well so it was really good for them also we are autism friendly sailor sailing at sea as well so we have for autistic children we have an array of activities that are designed for um aut- autism at sea all of our youth workers have, have qualifications in obviously childcare, but also all of them are registered to do the autism at sea as well so that's a that's a key thing that we don't shout about but then also for the older children because the older children are you know they get to that teenage age and you say kids club to them and they're like oh to a kids club so we just have the hangout where the, the the kids can just check themselves in and check themselves out and a bit like what you said before they can catch up with you at night time or catch up with you in the afternoon once they've been with their pals for the afternoon they can go into their hangout area and we've got the football tables and we've got mixing decks so they can make music and basically they've got wi-fi so they can hang out and do whatsapps and snapchats and all the things that kids and teenagers do um but also cruising with children is is such a great safe environment for kids as well because you know they're where they are on the ship but they're somewhere on the ship so at least you know that they're somewhere on the ship and you have multi-generations families that travel so you know mum and dad you know, nan and granddad, aunties and uncles, and it's all great because all the different destinations we go to. You might have mum and dad that want to go and do an excursion, and you might have nan and granddad that just want to sit by the pool all day. But it's really nice that everyone can go and do that in the day, and then meet up for dinner in the evening, and you know, share their experiences, and then go off to see one of our amazing shows, or go along to the silent disco. And you know, it's it's a great thing for multi generational families cruising. That's definitely getting bigger. Yeah, just to touch a point, the what you were saying about when they're on the cruise ship, they can't get off the cruise ship. They're there. Well, you can probably, always yeah, them absolutely. Up. Always, they're not going to be. They're going to be looked after. They're not going to get themselves into sort of into trouble. Whereas you know, if you were on in on land and you were say in an all inclusive resort somewhere, they could potentially just walk out the front door and never yeah. be again because a lot of teenagers look like the middle aged adults now anyway. So. Maybe people aren't going to check them. But also, you know that they're not going to be able to drink anything as well because so you have to have to yeah, have your card to get a drink. So you know that yes. look at the sneaking in any drink or getting something sneaky from the from the bar. So yeah. from that kind of point of view, you can really trust because there is no way that they can kind of really get in sort of too much trouble. I think whilst being on board, Definitely. agree. Yeah, especially for the teenage yeah. kind of ones, but the sort of. What about the cabins that you, you've got on board for the families? Yeah, so with our staterooms, which is, well, like I said, most 85% of our staterooms are outside facing to either ocean view or balcony. The real good thing about the our staterooms is we have a lot of interconnecting staterooms. You've got that interconnecting door, so you've got the 
you know, if you've got older children, you could potentially put them in the state room next door, you know, two bathrooms as opposed to all trying to share one bathroom. And also, which is fantastic on board, our balconies open. So you can open the balcony. So if you want, even if you've just got two staterooms next door to each other, you can open the balcony. So you've got one big balcony. Oh. So, you know, the kids can go between the balconies um, to the two rooms, or we can have the front of the, on certain staterooms, we can like a, an extra door in. So instead of having your two front doors, you just have one main door. And the two front doors are behind that as well. If they're, you know, wanting that ultra luxury experience we didn't have our bigger suites and we have our retreat access as well which have you know sky suites that will hold more than four people in we have our royal suites and then we have the beautiful beautiful iconic suites on our edge series ships which hold up to six so there's lots of different options for families and i would love the idea that the balconies can be opened up so that you can you just ha- you have one big massive balcony for the whole family that you yeah. can all just sit and relax on and then when it's time to go to bed the kids can go or even yeah, you one even who's going to go to bed the other <laughs> they got yeah. their own cabin i think that's one of the problems that a lot of people have or think they're going to have on board ships is that everyone has to go to bed at the same time which means it's not yeah. really great if you've got sort of little ones i always kind of say for families that have got little kids is always go for a balcony do the opposite of me always go for a balcony because um, you can go and sit outside with a glass of wine yeah, on the balcony whilst the kids fall asleep. Absolutely. And also, if you are a family share in one state, when you're trying to get ready for dinner, it can be quite frustrating when you're all in the same space. So if you do have that outside space, you can say to the kids or mum or dad, whoever got ready first, right, you're ready, just go sit on the balcony and give us all more space whilst you're reading a book on your iPad. On the balcony So it's giving people that outside space so you're not all you know, climbing over each other. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that podcast. That was just a little bonus one that we clipped out of our main podcast that we did with Michael. And you can find that wherever you found this podcast from. Um, if you found that useful, please leave us a review or rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts from. And if you want one of us to help you find your dream cruise, please get in touch with us at rocktheboat.travel. That's rock the boat, all one word. Dot travel. Thank you much and save sailing.